dwelling force on us by the Holy Ghost through our leaders teaching us that we must come to the level of sanctification. And let me tell you, that's the next definite experience after salvation. If you are still rising and falling into sin, and you are even wondering, even you yourself, you are judging it, am I actually safe? Because this is not Christianity. Your challenge is you are yet to bring your level, yourself, to the level of biblical sanctification. Let me read the text before I give the definition. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Verse 3 and 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. For this is the will of God. Even your sanctification that you should abstain from fornication. And verse 4, that every one of us should know how to possess our vessel in sanctification and honor. The good news is that one of the purpose of this message is to help us to know how to possess our vessel, our humanity, our body in sanctification and honor. And look at where honor is. Only the sanctified will be glorified. So if you don't, don't taste the glory of God, it's not God. You are destined to be glorified. He that he has called, he has justified. And they that he has justified, he has glorified. You are a glory candidate. Whichever sin is covering that glory, I curse it from the root. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. What then is sanctification? You see that word? God mentioned in his every time. Sanctify the people. Sanctify the camp. Sanctify, sanctify, sanctify. What is sanctification? It is separation unto God for holiness, righteousness, and uprightness. Making it right, upward, forward. Separation unto God for holiness, righteousness, and uprightness. And the word says, this is the will of God, even your sanctification. And what again, let me give another definition for understanding. Sanctification is a lifestyle of walking and living in the fear of God. You are walking in it. You are living in it. <laughs> you are clothed with it. It is feasible and tangible and touchable on you and yours. It's a lifestyle of walking and living in the fear of God. And you know what awaits you when you live in the fear of God. That's what made Joseph, Joseph, the minister, the slave boy, becoming the minister, the 
prime minister in Egypt. That's what made Daniel the captive, the president of the president in Babylon. This message will make someone tangible, unique, someone at the top, getting to the top from someone here. Yeah. No matter how low you are today, I want to give you this good news. Sanctification will lead to your promotion. Yeah. You may be a nobody, just separate yourself to God and keep true with holiness and righteousness. Suddenly, the greatness that is ordered, the glory that is ordered, for those who embrace sanctification will begin to come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, let me give you the third one, because out of two or three witnesses, the truth shall be established. Sanctification is inner purity with outer reflections. Inner purity with outer reflections. You wonder why you are just thinking all manner of junk talks. And you are wondering, I'm a Christian. What is all this? You keep on binding the devil. Satan, I bind you. Leave my heart alone. Leave my heart. Get out. Get out. I will not think evil thought again. I will not. I will not. As we go through this teaching, you will see the process. And you will embrace the product. In the name of Jesus Christ. Matthew 5, 8, blessed are the pure in heart. Not on the face. <laughs> Only sanctification can bring that kind of purity. Blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. Whatever is strong enough to connect you to God, to make you to live in God and walk in God and move in God. <laughs> it's a big subject matter. They shall see God. And to see God is to see solution. To see God and to see your healing. To see God is to begin to flourish. So shall it be for someone here. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sanctification, even though it's the will of God, believers are required to take heed to certain biblical instruction to live a sanctified life. There is what to do. This is a doing kingdom. Not just a believing kingdom. And if you are actually belief, you will act. Because faith is an act. In Hebrews 10, 36, it says, after you have done the will of God, you obtain the promise. What was the promise? Flourishing. But you have, these are the things to do. These are the things to do. It's true you can pray your way to sanctification. For whosoever has kept to receive it. Lord, sanctify me holy. The prayers in 1 Thessalonians 5.23 can be prayed. And you can get answer. But that is instant. There is the experiential dimension to it. He said the very God of peace sanctify you holy. That is totally. And I pray God that your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Everything hurting your body, hurting your spirit, hurting your soul. From today, they shall depart from you. Amen. You will get to the gate of heaven blameless. Amen. Accepted in the beloved. Celebrating with the saint triumphant. In the name of Jesus Christ. We can pray it. Because it's the will of God. For ourselves. But prayer is not a substitute to obedience of faith. You can see the spirit of obedience. Perfading every dimension. Of Shiloh 2023. Prayer is not a source of obedience, 
to scriptural instructions. Luke 6, 46, Jesus said, why are you calling me Lord, Lord? Without doing what I command you to do. Why call ye me? Lord, Lord, I've heard. But why are you not doing what? The things which I say. Most of the time we miss it in doing. Particularly winners. Winners global, listen to me. When it comes to anyone that is part of this family and everyone gathering with us, to hear the word, we are blessed. Abundance of the word. Prophetic word. Prophetic instructions. Waiting for obedience. But some just hear it and forget it. But I want to believe that from this Shiloh 2023 forward, 2023 forward, no more disobedience. No more laxity in doing whatever he has commanded. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. You don't chant the fear of God. Ah, I fear God. If you fear God, let's see it. You walk in it. Only those who walk in the fear of the Lord thrive in hard time. How many people thrive in hard time? Only those who walk in the fear of God thrive in hard time. Because access to our inheritance demands sanctification. Act 20. 32. Access to our inheritance demands sanctification. There are some things your father, my father, the Almighty won't give you. Except you know that you have the spiritual maturity to undo it. What will God do to bless someone who is carrying girlfriends around the town? If he's blessed more than where he is now, he will marry the second wife. If the blessing continue, he will marry the third one. So there are too many things that is in our inheritance. It's for us. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in hell, even as your soul prosper. But they are not safe to be delivered because of our spirituality. They are not safe to be delivered. If God gives money to some people here, it's like he hates them. Not that he loves them. Because he may destroy them. I have discovered in my small prosperity journey, God will not give you more than what you can handle. Either by maturity, by sanctification, <laughs> Or by spirituality. If he gives you more, it's dangerous. The devil may use it against you and get you out of the way and make you to destroy yourself. That's why the need for sanctification cannot be overemphasized. Those who have their inheritance in the scripture are sanctified people. All through the scripture. All through the scripture. And you know what happened to Solomon? He came from a generation of prosperity. The richest man on his day. But because he could not submit himself to sanctification and holiness, he submitted himself to fornication. And he was driven away, marrying wife, increasing concubine. The God of winner will not do that. If it will not pay you, if it will not be in your interest to be rich, it's better you don't have it. So that a little here, a little there, you are still being proved before you are approved for real inheritance. That's why sometimes you see that your limit is 100,000. The greatest testimony you have shared is 100,000. 
If you know how to handle, if you are a child of God, if you know how to handle that one way, beginning from tithe, then you can move. Some people have never seen a million. The day they see one million, we may not see them here again. <laughs> to some, it is nothing because they have left that level. After this embracing of sanctification, I see God changing your level from glory to glory. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Acts 20, 32, you see what the word says there. They are related. Your sanctification, your inheritance. Act 20, 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to God. To the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. We are being built up. We are still work in progress. And to give you what? An inheritance. He is building before possession of your inheritance. Among all them which are sanctified. You see those who have inheritance? Among those who are sanctified. So among the believers in the world, you have the group of the sanctified, the covenant band of the sanctified. Today, this Shiloh 2023, 20, you will join them. Yeah. I will join them. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. I hear this very well, not in terminate rising and falling into sin, like sanctification. You know, God told the people of old, you have wearied me with your repentance. Even though you can repent, <laughs> there's a limit to it. Israel were very fast at repentance. They can weep now. They can say they are sorry. They can ask Moses to plead for them. They can ask for mercy. But they go into it again. And when they got to Numbers 12, 13, they are about, <laughs> God said, this ten times, ten times. I'm not taking it again. Ten times. So therefore, don't dwell with sin. Don't embrace sinfulness because <laughs> there's a limit you can go before you are judged. These ten times, I won't hear. And it destroyed them in the wilderness. Who knows whether your own is already ate? And we don't know whether he will give you up to that or more than that. By sanctification, let's run away from sin. And in the name of Jesus, so shall it be for us. Yeah. Now, what are the demand for sanctification? What are the demand for sanctification? I go through them one by one. Because it will place a demand on you before you deliver the blessing and the glory to you. What are the demands of sanctification? Number one, purify yourself. Somebody shout it, purify yourself. Aha, uh -huh. you have a personal responsibility. In First John 3, 1 to 3, he said, now we the sons of God. But in verse 3, he said, whosoever have this hope in him, purify himself. You have the hope. You are now a courageous son of God. To keep that legacy, purify yourself. Every man that have this hope in him, purify himself even as he is pure. The person you are dealing with is pure. And look at verse 8 of the same scripture. Look at verse 8 of the same scripture. He that committed sin is of the devil. Nobody wants to be called a child of the devil. But carrying away sin, going from one sin to the other, repenting yesterday, committing another one today. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. 
one of the evidence of your salvation is that you have left your sins behind. A new you are man with a new lifestyle. There's a difference between who you are over there in darkness and who you are now. That's salvation. That is it. Purge. I mean, purify yourself. You see the word yourself? No one will do it for you. Because no one knows you like you. And number two, purge yourself. To purge me, get it. Get rid of it. Get it out. Purge yourself of evil thoughts, evil imagination. Purge yourself. 2 Timothy 2, 19 to 21. And that's the foundation of God. He said, the foundation of God signed that sure. Having this seal, the Lord knows his own. And let everyone that name the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. If you go to verse 20, 21, but in a great hour, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and heart, and some to honor, some to dishonor. And verse 21, if a man therefore purge himself, is your responsibility. From this, from what? From fornication, adultery, lasciviousness, he shall be a first one to honor, sanctify, and meet for the master's use and prepare unto every good work. Sanctify. You want to be sanctified? There are things to purge. Purge yourself of pornography. Watching blue film. It will interest you to know that some see a blue film, even in Shiloh Grand. And I will instruct you anything that look like that. For whatever purpose you put it there, Satan make you to put it. You purge it immediately. Or when next you see your heart, it's an instruction. Purge it. It has corrupted your destiny. It has brought the devil. It has connected you to the marine world. The blue film. Purge yourself. And number three, flee youthful lust. Second Timothy 2.22. Flee youthful lust, loss of the high, lot of the flesh, pride of life. Flee it. Lost the thing you are craving after that are not of God. And the youth is vulnerable to that level of behavior. But the Bible says flee. Flee means run with speed. The Lord will help you to do that. In the name of Jesus Christ. And one of such laws is 1 Corinthians 6, 18. He said, flee fornication. Why is fornication being brought out? Because that's one of the commonest pitfall for sinfulness. That's one of the highest corrupter or destroyer of your sanctification. Don't meddle around little, little girl here and there. He said, because of fornication, let everybody go and marry when you know you are right to marry, go and marry. You are entitled to only one woman in the whole wide world. Go and pick her and rest your soul and enjoy the wife of your youth and bye-bye to others. That is the Bible. That is the Bible. Once a lady is getting close to you, he has a mission. Satan may send him because the way you are going, hey, I'm a winner. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm a Christian. He said, let me send someone to him. Oh, this I'm a Christian. I am sanctified. <laughs> Let's see how far. He comes around as a help, as a friend. You ask some people, what is this lady doing around you? He says, my friend. Friend of what? <laughs> a man. He's my friend. That language is corrupting. Because there's nothing you can't do with your friend. You can tell your secret to your friend. And by the time one day you say, okay, me and my friend, we are going somewhere. And you may not return. <laughs> or at least return wounded. So, number four, abstain from all appearances of evil. 
1 Thessalonians 5.22, the moment it appears, don't let it uh, manifest. Once you say that this, this is evil coming, pick real, abstain. Abstain from all appearances of the devil. You can't see a woman by me, by the back of my car. If my wife is sitting by my side, oh, she can ask, permit a woman to sit in front. No problem. It's a law. Even if I meet you stranded and I know you, there is still something I have to protect on my own. I can't save you to unsave myself. <laughs> so, don't wait for it to manifest. Once it's coming, pick race. Say, no, no. Be sensitive and be very personal with yourself. And then the thing somebody else cannot withstand. If you go and damp into it and you know yourself, you that even when you see the lap of a woman, your body is already shaking. <laughs> you now say somebody says, I should come to you to visit you. Uh, that appearance is not good. It may ditch you and frustrate your consecration. And number five. Put off the old man with his deed. There are certain things you are used to. Your old man is still there craving for expression and trying to inform you that this is normal. Everybody is doing it. Old man, your whole styles of living, say put it off. You know what you put off? You put it away from you. Put off the old man. Colossians 3, 9. Put off the old man. The old man still want to abide with you. He has been with you for long. He has been your tenant. Put him off. And look at it on the other side. Number six, put on the new man. Which is renew. Uh -huh. There's no vacuum. Where the old man used to be, is the new man that should be there. Put him on. Put him on. You may have light in your house until you switch it on. There will be no light. Put the new man on. Because if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. The new has come. The new man. Colossians 3.10. Put on. Clothe yourself with a new appearance, a new lifestyle. That is it. And until you put the new man, the old man will still reign continuing to reign. Whatever is old in you that must be let go, I command discipline to let it go. Yeah. Courage to let go. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And number seven, give no place to the devil. The devil you advance the goes about seeking who he may default. He said, ye resist him steadfastly in the faith. The devil's business is to steal, to kill, and destroy. And it's a daily affair. That's why I say, when you pray, daily, pray like this. Lead us not unto temptation, but deliver us from evil. You need to hold fast to your deliverance by giving no place to the devil. Ephesians 4, 27. Give him no place. What, where you give him is where he occupy. He has no right into your territory except by your permission from inside to outside. Give him no place. Be very smart as resistance. What you don't resist is permitted to remain. And my God will give you understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. James 4, 7 Submit yourself therefore to God. That's not enough. <laughs> resist the devil. He will flee from you. Don't assume that the devil will go on his own. One dirty habit will go. One addiction will go. Resist. Man pressure over those things to leave you alone until it is no longer found there. So shall it be for you in the name of Jesus. And number eight, exercise yourself unto godliness. Godliness is practical. 
Godliness means godlikeness. What will God do here? That's what we should do. Until you are sure, it's better not to move. God likeness. God likeness. God like because you are God look alike as He is, so are we in this world. First John 4 17. So exercise yourself. It's you who will do it unto godliness. First Timothy 4 7 to 8. Exercise yourself. Make it practical. Verse 8. Bodily exercise profited little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of life that now is um, of that which is to call. Is for your gain, is for your profiting. And the Lord will help you to do that. And number nine, don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Unbelievers shouldn't form the league of your business partner, your tight friends, your confidants. No. They will lead you to where they are. If you can't lead them to where you are, be not unequally yoked with unbelievers. 2 Corinthians 6, 14 to 18. Too many things are about them. They are listed there. Don't go along with them. And evil communication corrupt good manner. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. And number 10, take regular showers in the world. If you abandon the scripture, you will not be empowered from your inside. How shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking he according to thy word. Thy word have I kept in my heart that I may not sin against you. That's Psalm 119, verses 9 to 11. The word. Every day you must read scripture, meditate in certain portion, get the revelation. Be packaged. Feed your spirit. And number 11, engage the Holy Spirit on the altar of prayer to mortify the deed of the flesh. First Corinthians 14, 4. Oh, you charge yourself. Pray in the Holy Ghost. He that pray in an unknown God, edify himself. Keep himself free. Keep himself sanctified. So shall it be for you. The Holy Spirit must be your partner. That's why his name is Holy. Is the one who is holy can make you holy. And finally, number 12, be committed to a life of watching and praying. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. Be prayerful. Matthew 26, 41. What you cannot receive by your effort, God will give you strength as you pray. Particularly praying in the Holy Ghost. And strength will come upon you. And your life will never be the same again. I therefore see Everyone under the sound of my voice, obedient to these rules, to this commandment for sanctification. May you take the step from now and rededicate yourself to sanctification. The louder, amen. Stand on your feet, give thanks to God for what he has had, and tell God, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready.